guess this will be part two of my 65 Fender Showman video here. I had it all ready to power up and test, see if the filter caps are bad or not. Got my light bulb amp, uh, current limiter that I made 15 years ago to fix another amp that had a filter cap that blew. And I was all ready to plug it in and I just noticed now that this cord doesn't have a ground on it. Not only that, it's it's uh, coming apart. I don't know if you can see that, but it's coming apart here in the uh, you can see the insulation. There you go inside. So I guess I'm gonna have to pull the chassis back out and put a grounded cord on it. Then I can try this again. So I pulled out the chassis and it looks like it's got the original power cord here, which is kind of a little hard to see. I don't have the best light, but there's a white wire right here, black wire, no ground wire. And it looks like this is the original cord. It's been patched up or something a few places or maybe replaced or made longer or something but looks like the original amp only had two wires and no ground so I'm going to have to I guess make this a safer amp and have it be a grounded power cord and the other thing I got to figure out is what ohm speaker it wants this says it's the ab763 circuit and uh so my understanding is this year it wants to see a eight for this year manufacturer wants to see a eight ohm impedance but uh it doesn't seem to matter that much on these old fenders the output transformers seem pretty robust so and I guess I'll end up changing the power cord. Well, I just looked up the code on the output transformer here and found out that it is indeed an 8 ohm output transformer. So now I know what kind of speakers I should hook up to it at least. And all these things have date codes that look like they're from 1965. Well, at least the power transformer. These other ones are harder to date, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a 1965 Showman. So onwards and upwards, time to change the power cord. Okay, so what I've decided to do, I've been thinking about this for a while. I'm going, I pull all the power tubes out. I'm going to power this up using my light bulb. Um, current limiting arrangement here with a 40 watt bulb and I'm just going to turn it on see what happens now I I asked some people online you know in a forum like what's the best way to do this and they're all like oh just don't even turn it on replace all the caps and all that and but you know I I really don't believe that I have to replace these electros uh, I think if they're gradually exposed exposed to higher and higher voltage that they'll reform so I guess we'll see I guess I should introduce my technical advisors Ringo and Ollie they're they're inspecting the amplifier to make sure that it's all good <laughs> And you'll notice that I have the speaker plugged into the speaker jack here so that there's a load on the output transformer. So I guess we're going to turn this on and see what happens. All right, here we go. So there's our light bulb. And um, it was got bright for a second, 
And then it kind of got dimmer, so that would seem to indicate that we don't have a train wreck happening. I probably should be measuring voltages too, but... Alright, so we ran this thing for a little while without uh, any tubes at all in it and nothing smoked or burnt that I can tell. And so we depowered it and put all the preamp tubes in it, fired it back up, and um, everything seems to still be working okay. Didn't blow any fuses or anything, and the light bulb is uh, just rather dim, so that's good. Doesn't mean it's drawing any excessive current, so, so far so good. I think I'll let this run a little bit longer and we'll stick the power tubes in and see if everything's still good. And uh, incidentally, I mentioned earlier that the power cord wasn't grounded. I wasn't thinking that um, these amps back at that time, they didn't really have a ground. So I decided to just fire it up and test it all with the uh, original cord. And I guess I'll change that at some later time, but Right now, I just want to get the amp working, so... Oh, and here's, here's the other kind of interesting thing. There's these really interesting, monstrous quarter-inch jacks here. They're not jacks, plugs that uh, are on this really super fat cable. I don't know if that's a speaker cable or what, but it's it's... I guess it's a company called Hot Wires. It's still in business, but I mean this thing is chunky. I mean, uh, you know, here's here's my finger next to it. It's like as big as my finger, and uh, it's all it's three pieces of brass that screw together, and it was all totally um, corroded. I had to clean it all up, and that was interesting. So, anyway, so far so good. And we have sound. It didn't blow up. <laughs> so what I did is I just kept putting progressively higher wattage light bulbs in here and then powering it up and letting it sit for like 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, so I started with a 40, then I stuck a 60 in there, and then a 75, then a 100. And the 100 is when I tried firing it up with all the power tubes and preamp tubes in there. And uh, it didn't blow up, nothing fried when I turned it on. So and I've been playing it for, I don't know, a half hour. And um, nothing's blown up. I had to turn all the pots back and forth about 20 times to get rid of the scratchy because they hadn't been used in years. And um, so far, my hunch about how to fire this up without a variac and just using the light bulb current limiter thing worked out very well. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to anyone who has an old blackface amp, say, that hasn't been fired up in 20 years, but I had a hunch that these old electrolytic capacitors are probably a lot more durable than people think, and plus I knew who had this amp and how it was stored, and I knew some of its history, so if I would have just bought this off eBay and someone said, well, I hadn't fired it up in 20 years, selling it as is, I'd probably be a lot more reticent to... Uh, just fired up and hope for the best but in this case I knew some of its history so it was a calculated risk but it all worked out and there you go nineteen sixty five showman amp up and running so I had to pull out the chassis to do some little minor tweaking and just kind of Visually inspecting all these old electrolytic caps. None of them look like they're bulging or leaking. And so.
think I'm going to replace the power cord. And... I don't see any sign of any burnt resistors, anything like that. Everything looks pretty good. So, all right. Just a side note, whoever built this thing was very meticulous. Look at all the resistors, the tolerance bands are all facing the same way. Just like how I would build something. It's a little more of a process than I was initially thinking, but I've got the grounded power cord on the here now, and I've completely disabled the ground switch and removed the death cap. And so now we've got grounded power cord, and I think I can put this chassis back in. But before I do that, I'm going to inspect the main. Filter caps real quick, make sure they all look good. Took the cover off for the main power filter caps. Looked at them. I do not see any signs of leaking or bulging. So, they seem to be okay. I'm not sure for how long they will be okay, but uh, from this point on, I'll consider maybe changing these, but I don't know, considering the condition of the amp and everything, I don't know, they, they might last a while, but anyways, um, I think I'm going to put this thing back in the chassis now and consider this done for the moment until I figure out what else I want to do.